Welcome to part three of my Linux CNC HAL tutorial series. On this one, we're gonna cover how to hook up the HAL so you can drive an output pin on the parallel port breakout board from your G-code. Uh, that's using the uh, M62 to M65 uh, commands on your G-code program. There's also M66, which is very similar for reading off an input pin, um, but we won't be covering that one in this video. It's basically the same thing, we'll cover it later, um, but for now, we're just gonna focus on a simpler example with the output pin. And basically what this lets you do is uh, once you hook everything up and change like three lines in your configuration files, you can come over to the MDI console on the GUI and do an M64 P0 and then bam, right? So I had a little crosshairs on the back of my Z axis. And let me tell you, for five bucks, this is a fantastic upgrade. I use this thing all the freaking time. Like for example, uh, you can use it to make sure your stock is squared up. Right, just by putting it on the edge there and tracing the laser back and forth. If uh, that little crosshair stays on the edge the whole time, it's square, and you can see it kind of came out by the edge, so I just bump it a bit, and then it's closer. Then if you uh, find the offset between the edge of the, uh, the torch and the, uh, the cross here, it's really easy to place the work, um, or place your next job at a certain part on the sheet, right? You can like tell where you're gonna be cutting. And, uh, you can even use the preview on Axis to trace out the whole area your next program is going to cover, so you can make sure you're going to dodge any like holes and stuff you might have from uh, prior runs on that piece of plate. Um, but yeah, let's cover how this thing is hooked up now in terms of wiring here on the table, and then we'll go with the wiring uh, in HAL on the confuser. So back here we have the uh, little laser diode. It's again a five dollar Chinesium one off of Fleabay. Nothing fancy in the slightest. And I have it hooked to the Z-axis with a bunch of hot glue. So <laughs> basically precision eyeballed it to make it, you know, roughly vertical. And if it's close enough, it's close enough, right? <laughs> uh, it helps that with uh, plasma cutting, the, uh, the height of the work surface is basically the same no matter where you're cutting, right? Like right here, it's probably two inches you know, from here to here, right? If I have uh, like a thinner sheet metal from uh, down here, it'll be maybe like 2.05 inches, right? <laughs> Very slight difference in the, uh, the offset there. So any angular misalignments in the laser don't really change the offset between this and the torch. And of course, it's also a plasma cutter, so it's not, <laughs> it's not like super precise anyway, you know, but it's definitely, uh, you know, definitely uh, pretty good for lining up stuff like you see right there. Now this is wired up uh, with a couple of those thin wires going through the whole uh, drag chain here. And I actually pulled uh, the wire for that laser and basically all my signal wires out of old Cat5e cable. Um, so you know the stuff we had back before Wi-Fi? <laughs> it turns out that's actually pretty great for doing this kind of stuff because it has a, uh, what, four color-coded twisted pairs of 24 gauge solid copper wire inside. And like solid copper is, isn't ideal, you know, strand to be better for flexibility's sake, but uh, it's thin enough that it's still plenty flexible enough to run to the drag train, uh, drag, drag a chain, ah, the way it is, uh, you know, right here. And for the five milliwatt draw on that laser, this is again, amply enough to carry uh, that amount of, amount of power. And then the, uh, the main thing is down here at the parallel port breakout board, we've got the, uh, the board and the relay. So um, I guess on this side of the relay, it's the contact side, and we've got the uh, five volt line over the laser diode being broken by the contacts on the relay. And then somewhere in this mess of wires uh, is also the, uh, the ground wire coming back and then hooking you know, down to the same um, power supply down there. Now the uh, one important thing is that the uh, breakout board and the relay both share a common ground. You know, This and that are also powered off that same five volt relay. And that's important because if they don't share a ground, then uh, you won't be able to get a good um, signal, you know, from here to power that, right? You don't have any, uh, any common reference for this to have a high signal. So this one then has, uh, yeah, the high, the five volts power for the, uh, uh, electromagnet that actually flips the switch, the ground for the same. And then this is the signal wire that comes down to pin 16 on the bob. Uh, now this relay is a bit weird in that it triggers when this line is pulled low. A lot of them get triggered and they pull high. It really depends on what kind of relay you got. 
This is like a one dollar one off of AliExpress, so you kind of get you get test it when you get it, and then uh, you know see what works. But uh, that's all the wiring, you know, very simple. And we'll take a look at the how now and see that it's equally simple. So of course, these files of mine are in a Git repository, making it very easy to see what changed between part two and part three. I have also put them up on GitHub if you want to check them out over there. Uh, there'll be links down in the video description below. So you can see in this part, uh, all I did was add one new file called 40 laserhow and then do, did one small change to the INI. So looking at that one first, basically it's uh, in the how section here. We need to tell Linux CNC about the new how file. So we used to have uh, you know, 10-steppers.how. Now we had a line for 40 laserhow And that just says like, hey, load this how file too. And as I mentioned uh, back in the last video, this uh, whole number dash name thing is just a convention of mine to help me tell what order the files get loaded in. Uh, Linux CNC doesn't care about that naming though, and it will just load them in the order you put them in this INI file. So be sure you put them in the order you want them loaded, and also be sure you put them in there. Because <laughs> if you forget to put uh, the 40 dash laser hal in here, then you'll spend like half an hour trying to figure out why the hell your thing isn't, you know, why it isn't working. Uh, <laughs> speaking from experience. So yeah, don't miss that part. That's important. Uh, then in the how file itself, just this one little guy, of course, it's all brand new. So it's showing in green, kind of annoying and hard to read. So let's look at it in a regular old uh, text editor instead. And there we go. And this line is the real magic. Doing a net command, setting up a signal called laser, and then hooking the uh, digital output pin of the motion component to the digital input pin of the power port component. Now, yes, this uh, pin is labeled 16 dash out, but it is an input pin as far as how is concerned, and it is so named because on the parallel port breakout board itself, this is driving an output pin. But uh, basically, this one is provided by the motion component, and uh, its whole purpose is to be written to by the M62 to M65 commands. So when you uh, write any of them, it will either set this pin high or low. Now, how exactly do you learn about the existence of these pins? Well, <laughs> it's in the docs. You know, at some point you gotta read some of the docs. Uh, luckily you have me here pointing you towards some of the better stuff I found in them. So, you know, if you go to the uh, man page again from uh, man motion and we search for M62, Boom, there you go. <laughs> you can find uh, that whole you know, output pin thing. It's just built right into Linux CNC, just right there for you to wire up A to B as easy as can be. And you've also got the uh, input pins mentioned right here above for those uh, commands with M66 if you want to do a, a waiting on a signal to happen instead of uh, putting a signal out. Um, let's see. And yeah, so you get, uh, I think, four of these by default, and they're labeled uh, 00, 01, 02, and 03. And I believe you can change something in the INI file to jack that number up if you need more, but I haven't needed more yet, so I haven't done that. But you get four by default, uh, and you can always get more if you need them. Uh, and that's why when we do the uh, M64 command, it's M64P0, because the motion pin here is zero, right? So it's not related to the parallel port pin. It doesn't care about that. It's... Uh, that G-code is referring to the pin on the motion component itself. And of course, if the uh, whole net laser motion arrow power port thing looks like Greek to you, you should go back and watch video number one because I go and explain the basics of the how syntax in that video. You know, this is a series that we do build up from fundamentals there and it is important to catch all of that. Uh, and then down here, we're just setting that one parameter as a, a thing to invert that uh, that pin because again my relays trigger when they are drawn low so when this uh how pin goes high from running n64 or m62 then this how pin here goes high and then in reality it sets the physical pin to being low let's see uh now if this does not work the way you expect when you're working on it yourself of course you have uh, the man page for motion the uh how par port man page is also very helpful uh, you know, for telling you what the uh, power port pins do. Then you get the documentation here in the PDF. Uh, you ask questions down below. As long as you ask good questions, I will do my best to answer them. Uh, and then the Linux CNC forums, once again, are great. Uh, also point you towards a handy little tool called Howmeter, which I don't think I've mentioned yet. And you run this guy, it basically gives you a list of every single pin, signal, and parameter in your CNC Linux uh, instance. And it lets you check whatever they are right now. 
So for example, it's currently false. If I go over to my thing here and I run an M64 P0 and come back to how meter, uh, oh, that's digital out, sorry. Now it's true. <laughs> so I go back and uh, now I do an M65, M65 P0. Now it's false, there we go. <laughs> the digital outs, not the uh, digital ins, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is great for just like seeing uh, what the pins really are written, uh, you know, what they're putting out. And you can check this one and check the parallel port one as well to make sure that that signal connecting the two is working the way you expect. Um, and of course, this is so handy, you might find yourself needing like five of them at one point, in which case there's a handy trick you can do uh, with a for loop in bash. You do like a four X in one, two, three, four, five. Do how meter ampersand done. And that'll just give you five of them right here that you can, uh, you know, click around into your heart's content. Now, uh, this is a, a loop in bash where basically you're doing, telling you to do it five times and the, uh, ampersand on this how meter is a uh, syntax or backgrounding of process. So these will all run and let you, uh, you know, launch all five and still have an active terminal here in which you can, you know, do more stuff. And then when you're done with these, you just go and, uh, you know, kill them all out that way. Exit, 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 exit. And I clicked away. There we go. <laughs> and that's, uh, yeah. At some point I gotta do a video about Linux tricks because there's so many things you can learn and so many things that make, make uh, your life on Linux just easier. Um, but that is a video for another time. <laughs> oh, and of course, it's a uh, M65 P0 to turn this back off. <laughs> now, I should point out that uh, the idea of triggering a crosshair via G-code is just a little bit silly, because by its nature, a crosshair is the thing you're going to use before you run your program to set things up, right? And while the G-code is running, you're probably never gonna to need to turn the thing off and on again, right? Because the machine's already up and running, you're done with the setup. But I wanted to show this one first as an example, because it's a very simple, straightforward one. And the concept of, uh, you know, triggering that output pin on the parallel port breakup board is widely applicable. You know, whether it's uh, firing a relay or firing some other device, you know, any five volt signaling device, the idea can work for a lot of things, right? Like for example, um, say you had a small CNC shop, right? You got like three mills and then all running some three hour program pumping out parts. And meanwhile, you're back in the office, uh, you know, sending emails. Personally, I'd rather CNC the emails and then manually mill parts, right? <laughs> but technology has only gotten so far. So, uh, you know, while you're back in the, uh, the office sending emails, you could have a, uh, a relay on each of your mills and then go and get a a uh, couple of car horns from the local, local junkyard, slap down the side of the mill, at the end of your G-code, just have it fire a car horn to let you know, you know, to have it honk and tell you to come out of the office, get to the mill, and to uh, put the next piece of, uh, you know, next work piece in there and keep pumping out parts, right? That way you keep your, uh, your mills all running, you know, 100% duty cycle. And speaking of duty cycle, actually, um, another video of mine, maybe two, three months ago, I talked about uh, the air compressor for my plasma cutter and how running it for that thing uh, was basically running 100% duty cycle all the time. Because that thing takes just an ungodly fuck ton of air. <laughs> so my concern is I was gonna overheat uh, the air compressor. And sure enough, I uh, used an Arduino to measure the temperature on the output of the air compressor. And I was definitely overheating it. Uh, <laughs> now I fixed that by putting a uh, one kilowatt blower motor, just blasting air over it to cool the air compressor off. But alternatively, I could have taken that Arduino and have it make a five volt high or low signal and then read that on an input pin on the parallel port breakout board up in the top here and uh, then use MC6 to have it pause when that pin is set high. So basically when the air compressor gets too hot, the Arduino says, hey, I'm too hot. And then uh, before every next cut, the uh, Linux CNC code will do an MC6 and wait for it to cool down again. That way it only interrupts it after a cut, before the next cut, and only wait as long as it has to for the air compressor to cool down, right? Otherwise you can do like a dumb sleep of just saying, sleep for a minute, but that can be excessive, right? If it's not, if it's not overheated and doesn't need to take all minute to cool down, then why sleep for a minute, right? So that way it, uh, again, can uh, you know, improve the efficiency of the machine. 
Now for this thing, uh, again, it will be smarter to trigger it from some other way. So in the next video, we're gonna cover how to add a button to a Pi VCP panel, basically extend the GUI, uh, you know, extend access to have more features, and then we'll uh, fire the crosshairs with that. So that's all for this one. I'll catch you in the next one, and peace.